Look how gorgeous this is. Freaking pizza is delicious. Best pizza in town. Hello, and welcome to Master Pizza Theater. My name is Bill Cooks, and I will be showing you how to make pizza dough. It's quite delicious, and it's incredibly good for you. Didn't you know that? I may have made that up. But nonetheless, this is an amazing pizza dough, and I'm going to show you how to make it so that you can stop buying stupid pizza delivered in a cardboard box. Okay, let's go. Hello, I'm Bill Cook. I cook. I name my show Bill Cooks. I'm not good at naming things. Good at cooking things, but naming not so much. Alright, so what do you need to make pizza dough? This is what you need. You gotta have flour, you gotta have water, you gotta have oil, you gotta have yeast, and you really gotta have a mixer. If you don't have that, you're screwed. Okay, your water. Water is incredibly important. Don't use just regular old crappy tap water. We happen to live in a place that has great tap water. But we still run it through a filter and the whole thing and uh, it comes out and it tastes like mountain spring water. It has to be about 105 degrees. This is slightly warmer than that and you'll see why in a second. Put this in your mixer. Okay, so the next thing you need is sugar. This recipe, following the numero uno recipe, is a little sweeter than normal. There's a quarter cup of sugar in this. I, that is not a mistake. There's a quarter cup of sugar in this. Swear to God. Okay, so there's that. What else goes in this? Loveliness. You have to have, have to have your yeast. It's gotta get yeasty. Okay, so just one packet of the rapid rise yeast. It's easy to get at the grocery store. Costs nothing. So. That goes in there. This gets stirred up for a second. As you can see, I'm so used to doing this backwards. Come on. There we go. Okay. What the hell, man? All right, let's mix that up for a little bit. What the hell? You know, make sure all the yeast is in the water. All right, so what's the other main ingredient? Beer. Beer is yeast. Beer is flavor. Beer is delicious. Beer is wonderful. Beer is my friend, as you can tell. So how much beer goes in here? Not a lot, just a little bit, but it cools down that water enough that you go want to want that water just a little bit hotter. So that's about it. The rest, luckily enough, won't go to waste. Can't do that. All right, so this is going to sit and do this. It's all mixed up. This sits five, 10 minutes or so. Activates the yeast. All right, come back in a minute. Oh, delicious. All right, so now that our uh, yeast water sugar mixture is up to uh, then what you do is you add a tablespoon of melted butter. Doesn't matter, salted, unsalted. I don't give a crap. I ain't telling anybody. Okay, you got a quarter of a cup of olive oil. Must be olive oil. Don't get the Popeye oil. It's terrible. All right, flour. Flour is the next ingredient. Well, it's pretty much the only other ingredient. Flour is incredibly important. Uh, not so important that you have to get the Italian stuff, the double O stuff, ground on a thousand year old millstone by monks in some mountain monastery thing. And a, no, but you have to have the right protein levels and things. Gluten is important to pizza, unless you're making a gluten free pizza, in which case, no. So, AP flour won't work. Bread flour won't work. Bread flour has way too much protein in it, it will just make horrible awful thick mess uh ap flour won't make dough at all it'll make gooey icky yucky crackers basically so what i found out is if you go half and half half bread flour half ap you get the perfect amount it's about two and a half cups so there you go this will make one large pizza uh thick crust if you want to make two pizzas and you want them thin crust you would just 
divide the dough in half once it's all kneaded and everything. If you want to make more, you can double the recipe, those sorts of things. Um, the only thing that we're missing after this is salt, but you wait to put the salt in because salt deactivates the yeast and we want the yeast to do what it's going to do. So start our mixer, we've got our dough hook in here, this is happy, it's ready to go, we're slowly going to add our flour. By slowly, I mean tuck it in there without getting it all over your kitchen. That is all your flour. Get it off the top of the dough hook thing there. Use your uh, little scraper. Get it down the sides. We're going to let it come together and make a, a dough ball, basically. It'll take a couple of minutes, maybe a minute, at this speed. We're just doing low speed right now because we're just trying to mix everything together and get it all together. This is an exciting. Come back for more in a second. Excuse me, I'm going to take a beer break. So here's, here's the thing about pizza dough. Weather changes your pizza dough. So you have, right now, um, I live in a, a place called uh, Freedom, um, also known as Arizona, and we have the, the monsoons coming through right now. So it's like a thousand percent humidity and uh, you know 105 degrees, so it's lovely. But that changes your flour. Everything changes everything. So this is really, really wet right now. This needs a lot more flour. This is going to need a ton more flour. I should be adding equal parts of that and that, but I'll start with this. In the next batch, I'll add some of that. So let's get this back on, get this going. A little bit of flour at a time. It's got to pull together as a is a dough ball. If it doesn't pull together as a dough ball, you don't have pizza dough. And this is kind of where the magic is, is figuring this out and looking at it. Um, if it doesn't work and it doesn't look right, add more flour. If it's too sticky and it's just flat and moving around, it's not coming together as a ball, add more flour. It takes a lot more flour than you think it does. I'm gonna probably, I start off with two and a half cups, I'm probably gonna end up with three and a half cups before this is done. Uh, I'm telling you, this thing is a sticky, gooey mess. I will show you that here in one second. Alright. So, if anybody knows how to open one of these things, uh, please let me know, because this is... <clears throat> hate this. The guy that came up with this is an idiot. If you're related to the guy that came up with this thing, I'm sorry, he was an idiot. I hope you've done something to make the world better, because you've got a lot of making up to the world for it. Because that's, that's just freaking horrible. It really is. All right, so this bag ran out. Next bag of gold metal bread flour. There you go. So I'm gonna put a little more in here. It's about as much as I just put in a second ago. Let me show you what this looks like. too sticky. That is not going to work. We've got to add a lot more flour. That is not a pizza dough. That's a pizza no no. Alright. Okay, so we're going to keep adding flour until this thing behaves. Alright, I think I got it. That was probably another three quarters of a cup. Am I, why am I not measuring this part? Because measuring isn't going to do you one bit of good. What you need here is experience and an eye. Uh, I've been working on pizza dough for 20 years trying to come up with this. Uh, it's a pain in the ass. And it's not enough fun. i got to put more. 
Okay. I'm just going to put a handful. Right now. It's my pizza. I can put my hands in my flour if I want to. And you don't have to eat it. Shut up. Alright. That is coming together. Okay, that's starting to come together. Just needs a wee bit more. A little too sticky still. We'll go for a bit more. Boom, that'll do it. Let's crank our speed up. Get that to start whipping our. Yeah, that's pretty much good for what we need right now. It is a nice bowl of dough with a little more flour. The pizza that I'm making, the Numerano pizza, is a little breadier. Uh, it's got the little pockets and the little bits, so using more bread flour is okay. But still a little bit more, I can't believe it. Seriously, it's that humid. If you live someplace where it's really, really humid, you know. You have to adjust recipes like crazy. All right, there it is. It's coming together perfect. Let me show you. So that's what it looks like when your dough starts climbing up the hook and forming the dough ball. It'll start slapping around kneading itself. Don't worry about the bit on the bottom. That will start getting incorporated. You just kind of, kind of pick it up a little bit and get it moving. That's it. All right, so it gets to this point. We still haven't put the salt in yet. So what we do is you turn this off, let it sit for 20 minutes, just like this. Just, just let it sit 20 minutes, come back, and then we're going to add our salt, do the final kneading in the machine, which takes about 10 minutes. And then we roll it out, tuck it up, which is incredibly important. I'll show you the technique on that. But for now, just let's clean up and uh, get ready for uh, phase two. All right, see you in a minute. All right, so it's been another about 20 minutes. I've taken the dough and I've scraped it off the dough hook. It's sitting in here in a ball. It looks beautiful. Now it is time to add our salt. One teaspoon of salt. Yes, I just use regular old, plain old iodized salt. Iodine is incredibly important to your diet. If you don't have iodine, you will die. Simple fact. Didn't make that up. You can look it up. Use the internet. The internet's never wrong. All right, push this sucker down. Fire this bad boy up. Let's mix it around a little here. All right. Now at this point, basically just give her the beans. Crank this bad boy up to about seven. Let her do her thing. Ten minutes of this, you got pizza done. Congratulations. All right, see you in a minute. So you can see here that the dough ball is nice and firm. It's not sticking anymore, and it's just whipping around doing this thing. If you have to do this by hand. You're going to be sitting there doing this for 10 minutes on the board, flipping it around and all that. It's a pain in the butt. So having a mixer is a huge help. Obviously, pizza was invented a long time before mixers, so it can be done if you so choose. And some people like it that way, but I'm not those people. I don't resist change. I like machines, and machines are our friend. Our robot overlords, eh, maybe not, but there you go. Anyways, that's it. 43 whatever this is all right this is finished it looks lovely it looks glorious and um it's ready to come out yeah it has built up a lot of all oh, the lovely gooeyness oh it's amazing look at that it just comes off in a beautiful thing oh yeah we got pizza dough so Get your pizza dough out of here. Oh, I love pizza dough. Pizza dough, good. Just a couple little bits still in the bottom here. Pull those out as well. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, let's move this around. Get that bad boy out of the way. We got a bowl here we'll need in a second, and we will need this in a second. But for right now, all we need is our nice, perfectly clean counter. Mostly clean counter. 
it was clean a second ago. All right, now it is time to make the dough ball. This is technique, technique, technique. This isn't in a recipe, this isn't in any way. You can Google it, you can look it up, there's other YouTube videos. This is one of those things where you learn this after years of experience. Okay, this thing is glorious. But what you want is a nice tight skin. That is the important part. So you kind of work this a little bit. Then, two hands on the side, you're just doing this. This is the motion. But your hands are kind of under it, so you're scooping it, rolling it, and you're getting it tucked under. So you're tucking it, tucking it, and tucking it, getting this beautiful skin. This is what people do with one hand. This is a little big for one hand. But this is where the magic happens. I swear to God. And the lovely Reba, everyone. You may be hearing my dog in the background. She wants a piece of this. She can smell it. It smells so good. All right. It's getting a little tight. Don't add too much flour, but you have to have enough to get it to work. This thing is tight already. Okay. Tell her. She's ready to go. Okay. So now see this here. You got to bring this together and pinch it. We've got a little too much flour in here. Yeah. Work it just a little. Again, this is where the magic is. You gotta feel it, you gotta know it, you gotta experience it. Okay, there it is. Now she's tight enough. Uh-huh. Oh, it's coming together. All right, so you roll her over, you got this ugly bits right here. Pinch your ugly bits. Pinch your ugly bits until they're not ugly anymore. Roll her back over. Gently massage. Gently. I don't know if the handsome Rufus has made it into frame yet, but my other dog is now in here going, what's that about pizza? <laughs> Little fact, dogs love pizza. Okay, this thing is glorious. It's amazing. It's beautiful. That skin is taut. It's gorgeous. It's amazing. Okay, olive oil in a bowl. Put it face down first, smear it a little, then the uh, ugly side down. Got your paper towel that you used to smear it all around and make sure you got it coated. Make sure you get the whole surface covered in olive oil. Just a wee bit. Pizza forms the skin. It's like pudding. When it sits here, it will rise. And at this point, we're, we're letting it rise. Uh, if you don't oil the skin, you don't cover it in, in a damp cloth, what happens is that skin gets really tight and it can't grow. That It forms a hard layer and pff, nothing happens. You don't get the great development, you don't get the great uh, structures inside. So, important to do that. I'm going to have my towel right here that I've run under the sink, which is damp. Incredibly important so it doesn't dry out. Set it here. I set it in a place that's about 80 degrees or so. Um, I want to set it for about an hour. This is going to go in the fridge for at least a day, probably two. If you want it to taste really good, it takes days to really do pizza right. So, just set this over here. It is 80 degrees in my house, so it is because that's the best the air conditioning does this time of year. All right. Looks like that's pizza. All you got to do is clean it up. All right. More in a minute. All right. So, it's been a day. Or a year and a half, and we're ready to make our pizza. I have the dough it's sitting here. If you're if it's in the fridge, you gotta let it sit for hours to come up to room temperature. Um, if you don't, it's not gonna rise real well. It's just gonna get real, real solid and dense. This sucker is perfect. This she is ready to go now. You can kind of toss it, move it around a little bit. Kind of spread it out. You don't want to smash it down at this point because you've been working real hard to get all these beautiful air bubbles in it and build it volume. So, what I'll do, start straight in the pan and start working it. This is the pan I'm going to use, so might as well shape it to the size of the pan I'm going to use, all right? And you don't want thin spots, so work gently and carefully. If it takes time, it takes time. Start going up the side, just kind of work it around. 
this is a giant pizza. <laughs> this is a big pizza. And it's a thick crust pizza. So it is going to be delicious. It's going to take a while to cook. And that is looking pretty good. I don't know if you can see. It's pizza. There you go. It's still got a couple of air bubbles in it in different places. And all that. Now, one thing I like to do is let it rest for a couple of minutes here because it has that tendency to spring back a little bit. This has rested enough. It doesn't have much spring to it, which is good. It's poofy. Um, but it'll still spring back a little bit and you can kind of coax it out a little. The, what you really don't want is when it goes in the oven and then the heat hits it and it goes and shrinks up about two inches because the way this pizza goes together, that's a bad thing. So. I can already see it starting to pull up in a couple areas. You can see here and here it's pulling up a little bit. So I'm going to let this sit for about five minutes, come back, and uh, give it a little bit more uh Be back in a second. Show you that. Thanks. All right. It's been a couple of minutes. I've been playing with it a little bit. It's pulling up a little bit. I'm going to just squish it out here just a smidge. It doesn't take much, just a little bit. You don't want to work it too hard, but you don't want to, you know, big thick spots. You want to make sure you got it fairly even. And now uh, that's what your pizza dough looks like. Now, this pizza dough cooks for a while and has a massive amount of ingredients on it. If you cook it, put your sauce on it just like this, it's gonna get, it's not gonna cook right. So what I always do with this is cook it off a little bit ahead of time, just a couple minutes in the oven kind of gets this top layer a little harder, puts a skin on it, so that the sauce doesn't get in there and really gum it up. Also lets it rise a little bit before it has all the weight of the ingredients on it, because there's gonna be a lot of stuff on this. This is not a Chicago style pizza necessarily. This is a sauce on the bottom, cheese on top pizza. <sighs> cheese up the sides and everything. If you were in Southern California and you knew what Numerono was, this is their pizza. Uh, this is not Pizzeria Uno from Chicago. This isn't uh, any of that stuff. No, this is uh, kind of that California Chicago style, if that's a thing. I don't think California has a style necessarily other than sucking, but um, it's, it's actually decent pizza if you do it this way. So here's this, I'm gonna stick it in the oven. I get the oven set at 400. Um, this pizza, you, with most pizzas, you want to cook them really hot. This one, if you cook it any hotter, it will burn the bottom before the top's done, and then the tops get screwed up, and the middle isn't. You kind of have to find a happy medium. So, 400 degrees, about four or five minutes, something like that, until it starts uh, rising up and gets a little puffy. And then we'll pull it back out, and we'll start us up here, so you can see it real good. It's got a nice skin on it here which is going to hold up to the sauce, which is going to go on there in a second. And it's still tight to the pan. It's actually a beautiful little lip on there. It's going to be so good. Okay, so first thing you do, sauce. I'll have a sauce recipe up. It's largely tomato sauce, a little bit of paste, herbs, garlic, nothing too fancy. Spread some of that. This is the coolest thing ever. Everybody has a mangled spoon. Mangled spoons are the best thing. Stick it, mangle it up even more like this, and stick it in the back of the drawer because they are the coolest thing ever. Okay, so I'm spreading the sauce on. I like sauce. I am not afraid of sauce. Okay. But yeah, if you go to BillCooks.com, it's B I L L C O O K E S. Yeah, that's how I spell my name. Dot com. You can see a lot of my recipes, a lot of stuff, videos there, um, other stuff that isn't here, stuff that wouldn't necessarily warrant a video, but it's fun to, fun to know how to do. So, uh, got a lot of stuff there, got uh, some cool stuff, you should check out the, uh, the chicken kebabs recipe, oh man, that was awesome, I love that, just had that the other day, so friggin' good, but it's not, uh, not without a certain amount of work. <laughs> There's a couple of special things in there, but if you go on the website, you find all of it. All right, so that's the sauce. That is a lot of sauce. I don't know if you can see. This thing's hot. I'm going to touch it anyways. Ah, the sauce. Wow. Okay. There you go. Sauced it up real good. 
Now I've got mozzarella here and I have sliced it, not grated it, it is sliced. This will go around the edges because this is going to form that beautiful crust around the edges and I'm going to use the maximum amount of cheese possible. I shouldn't be using maximum amount of cheese. Do you get this sense from all these videos that I really like cheese? It's funny because I'm actually allergic to dairy. It's not a lactose thing. I'm allergic to dairy. Uh, I d don't eat a lot of it. So, uh, don't drink milk, don't do a lot of other things, but uh, cheese doesn't seem to bug me as bad as some other things do necessarily, but uh, it has to be a pretty good distance between the cheese meals. So these videos aren't shot day to day to day to day. It's a pretty good distance between them when they have all this cheese. Okay, so got some more crumbly stuff here. Now I have a mix of, here's some provolone right here that I had. This is whole milk mozzarella and some parm. This is all going to be wonderful. We'll put a little parm in the middle there. Start laying all this down. This is going to be cheesy as hell. Don't tell my wife. She doesn't necessarily like the cheesiest pizzas in the world. But little bit not quite up the sides. You want this to go up the sides. It forms this beautiful crust. It blackens and it gets oily and it makes this wonderful crispiness and it's just, oh my god, it's crack. It is literally cheese crack. So this is supposed to be up the sides a little bit. There you go. That is not pretty, but Pizza isn't supposed to be pretty. You know what else pizza isn't? Pizza isn't one thing. Pizza is a style of cooking. Okay? It is it is not it is not pepperoni. It is not clams and white sauce or whatever the hell it is. It is whatever you like. It's what my grandmother loved pizza. She liked what she liked on it. Nobody gave her crap about it. She was an angry, angry woman, it's scary as hell. So we just let her eat whatever the hell she wanted. But this is the provolone right here, putting it in there. And it's super yummy. Provolone gives it that nice kind of a little bit of extra funk there. But see, this isn't fully covered, but that's a lot of friggin' cheese. All right, a little more uh, Parmesan here. It's a grated parm. Okay, I'm doing this a half and half. And I'm going to jump right into the deep end of the world of pizza hate and say, pineapple, does it belong on pizza? Of course. <laughs> but it only belongs on your pizza if you like pineapple on your pizza. If you don't, it doesn't belong there. Don't put it there. I'm not putting tofu on my pizza because I don't particularly like tofu. I'm not putting lentils on it. You could. If you like lentils on your pizza, I don't care. That's your pizza. It's not my pizza. So why the hell would I care? So is this thing going to have pineapple on it? Yeah, half ham and pineapple. Sorry, grew up with a Hawaiian style pizza and uh, I was too young to know better at the time and uh, developed a taste for it. You know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like heroin. You know, you didn't really realize how far are you going to get in until it was too late? And then, eh, what's the point of quitting now? So, ham goes down. Don't worry. I'm doing traditional stuff on the other side. Okay, so there's my ham. Here's some pineapple. These are chunks. They were canned. I did not have fresh pineapple. I'm sorry. It's a pain in the butt to, you know, have fresh pineapple around. 24 7 so don't do it canned stuff for this works fine okay so there's half of a pizza oh wait there's a secret ingredient it's bacon and it has some pineapple juice on it apparently well hopefully that doesn't ruin it oh yeah okay so ham 
pineapple and bacon. Or if you're in Canada, it would be two kinds of bacon. Be back bacon and uh, American bacon. That's looking pretty good. Okay, this side, I'm going traditional. I'm going sausage, I'm going pepperoni. Now this pepperoni, I don't know if you noticed, but 2020 has been pretty messed up. So, pepperoni shortage. This is the pepperoni I'm able to find. It's huge. If I put this in here, it's not going to work so good. All right, so I'm going to slice some of this up. This is from the deli. This is good stuff here. I'm going to give this a uh, quarter there. There, it's perfect. I'm going to put some of this around. Again, you can do whatever you want. You want all vegetables? Put all vegetables. Not my pizza. I don't care. Why should anybody care? I believe in freedom. Freedom of everything. Freedom of pizza. Why, why should anyone tell you what you can put on your pizza? If you want to put scrambled eggs on your pizza, I mean, seek help. But go for it. I don't care. Scrambled eggs is probably delicious on a breakfast pizza. I don't know. Okay, so we got pepperoni. We got my Italian sausage here. This happens to be hot Italian sausage. You can use mild. You could use meatballs. Meatballs. Oh my god, I love meatballs in this. Oh, it's so good. I happen to have Italian sausage. So, there you go. I also have a dog at my feet because apparently I dropped something. So, he's trying to eat my foot. Must have a chunk of something delicious on it. Rufus, <laughs> what are you doing? Dude, come on, man. Anyways, okay. So, there's that. Now, I saved a little bit of cheese here, as you can see. I kind of like to lock stuff in a little bit. So I'll just tear up a little bit, throw them around. There we go. This kind of melts in, does fun, funky things. All right, so red onion. Oh, I love red onion. I don't like yellow onion on pizza as much as I love red onion. It has this wonderful flavor, this wonderful smell, this wonderful everything. There's just something about it. It smells like a pizzeria. That's the only way I can describe it. When you walk into a pizzeria and you're like, oh, what is that smell? It's red onion. So yellow onion doesn't quite do that. And that is a lot of friggin' onion. Heck, what do you know? Okay, that pretty much looks like everything, but I'm going to give it a quick dust some parm do that because I'm gross it's my pizza I don't care I'm putting it back in the oven all right that's gonna take X number of minutes to cook um, it depends on the pizza it depends on how much ingredients you put it depends on a lot of things keep an eye on it when it looks done give it three more minutes and uh, it should be pretty good um, pizza takes a little longer than you think, especially pizza like this. You don't want it undercooked inside, so make sure you cook it really, really good. You're going to get brown spots and stuff. I'll show you when it's done. But anyways, that's this so far. We'll clean up. Come back in about 20-ish minutes, 23 minutes, something like that, and I'll show you how it looks. All right, thanks. All right, so this thing sat for a minute or two. This pan cools off pretty fast. It's not a full cast iron pan. Unfortunately, it's a sheet metal pan. Cast iron pans are hard to get, so I don't have one. <clears throat> so I'm gonna run this around. When you have a well-seasoned pan, you can do things like this, and it's beautiful. All right, so let's get this sucker out of the pan. Oh, please work. It's scaring me, always scares me. Look at that, beautiful. Nothing stuck because I have a well seasoned pan. Season your pants. All right, so I'm gonna slice this thing up and eat it up and enjoy. So I guess you can watch me do that, or maybe I'll just shut the video off and go eat. Why would you want to watch me eat pizza? That's just weird. So, um, there's your pizza. It's beautiful. You know how pizza looks when it's cut. You know what it looks like when you're eating it. I'll probably shoot a couple of pictures once I cut it. But uh, this is about the end of the video. That's how I make pizza. This is what a crazy, beautiful pizza. Look at this cheese crust. Look at this cheese. It dripped down the sides. It's amazing. Wow. 
<laughs> make this pizza at home, okay? Find the pan, find the thing, do all the stuff, make this friggin' pizza, it's delicious, you'll love it. Put pineapple on it or don't, I don't give a crap. I like pineapple. Judge me. Go ahead. I don't care. There you go. There's pizza. Enjoy. So, thanks for watching my video. As you can see, I'm hard at work on my next meal right now. So, make sure you subscribe, like, hit the thumbs up, hit the notification bell. There's probably four or five other things you can do to, to help. I don't know, share the video, comment, do anything you like. Tell us what you think, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Bye. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Look how beautiful this is. Oh, that wonderful cheese. Oh, some of this. Then on there. I don't know which one lost its thing. I'm going to put it there for next time. All right. That's pizza. Look how gorgeous this is. Freaking pizza is delicious. Best pizza in town. All right. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.